and gentlemen, welcome to episode 119 of PD's Awesome Guest Panel. And now before I introduce tonight's guest star, which I'm very, very, very glad to have back. He's one of my first guest stars when I first started PD's Awesome Guest Panel. I would like to introduce tonight's co-host for this evening. First off, my longtime dear friend and oh. uh, podcast uh, partner, Mr. Christopher Patty. Hey, yo. I love that uh, it's trademark. Hey, yo. You like my Ed McMahon, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also joining us tonight, very happy to have with me a dear friend of mine, uh, Tiffany Giordano. Hey guys. Did I say that correctly? I want to make sure I said that correctly. Yeah, you said it correctly. Awesome. And to introduce tonight's guest star, I'm, I'm very happy to have back on a awesome guy, a wonderful human being, someone I've been a fan of for many, many years. Uh, so you may, you may know this gentleman's work from projects such as Captain N, N the uh, the Game Master, and of course my favorite show, Ed and Eddie. My guest, I'd like to welcome back Mr. Ed himself, Matt Hill. Matt, welcome. How are you today, sir? Oh, uh, well, you know what? Uh, like, a, like a Texan said to me a long time ago, said if I was any better, I'd be standing next to myself. So, um, you bet your sweet bippy I'm doing pretty good. Well, thanks for having me, guys. <laughs> Uh, we love having you, and let me just say before we get to the questions, butter toast. Butter toast. Oh, this is my favorite. That's probably my favorite line. And then, uh, you know, like all the Christmas right, lines, that's my favorite too. All these lines are my favorite because, yeah, it's, you know, it's a good thing. Absolutely. <laughs> but thanks. Uh, what an honor to be asked to, uh, you know, be back on the show because I, I thought last time we got together, you were just like, shut up, just hang up. You're done. Forget it. You'll never be on this show ever again. <laughs> oh, like, is that me? <laughs> I had um, much intentions to bring you back on because I loved our interview so much. We had to bring you back for oh. a second one. Oh, I feel I very much appreciate it. Absolutely. And I, I love it. It's at the time of the Christmas. So, you know, that's like for me, it's a, you know, it's a good thing. It's uh so thanks everybody. Bless you, sir. And the question I'm going to ask is, we're, we're going to stay yeah. with the questions we asked last time, but I came up with some uh, new questions that Tiffany, uh, Chris, and myself are going to ask. And I'm going to ask the first question. And this is a question I ask all my guest stars that are actors and actresses, voice actors, you name it. And that is the raw emotion question. Say, uh, and I'm going to put you in a scenario now, Mr. Uh, Hill. If, if you were doing a scene with a co-star, and in this scene, it requires you and your said co-star to get in this heated argument. And your co-star goes up to you and says, Mr. Hill. And they, and they say that because they have so much respect for you in the whole wide world. They respect you dearly. And they go, Mr. Hill, it, this scene requires us to get into this heated altercation. This may sound a little bit diff, uh, diff, uh, unusual and odd, but I had an idea where we can enhance this scene. I want you to lay into me and lambast me so hard that you can make me cry in frustration. That way we not only can tell a, a, a really good story, but make it believable to the audience watching at home. If you were yeah. with this type of a, a method, what, what would your reaction be and what would you say to that said co-star? Well, um, my uh, my long shorted answer on that one, I've, I've only, I've been in one fist fight in my entire life. Um, and it was actually in a scene from an acting class and I was so bad because my coordination is so horrible anyhow, because I've literally never punched someone else. And my good friend, dear friend, Michael Dangerfield, I punched him so hard. And it was supposed to be, you know, like a stage pump, right? Or stage uh, punch. And I basically almost knocked his nose like right off the side of his head. Um, his nose, like it squirted, it kind of bent. And it's beautiful because like for, you know, 25 years <laughs> I've known him now, every time he's, he's, there, he's like, eh? Huh? What do you think of the nose, Maddie? Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so, so my first, you know, my first bit of violence was was very came by very very real, but from such a loving place. <laughs> so you know, I hope that answered the question. It did. I was actually gonna uh, ask you, uh, some you, guys. I'm one for one. I'm one for one. <laughs> <laughs> say that day you felt like very method actor that day. Or oh, no? Full method. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Method. I'm. I'm like. Um. I'm so method. Like I don't even like. I. I can't even describe the method because I'm so method. Um. Just you know. Like right now, I'm methoding. I'm. You, I'm one methody dude. You are the the most method man in the history of method, right? Yes, absolutely. Well, I mean, how do you think I played Ed? Right. He's oh, like kind of methody, right? You know. He's so, like, <laughs> <laughs> I love him. <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> Before I start babbling on, Chris, you got a question? Yes. Well, although I did have like a question that was related on the script. <laughs> yeah. Before I asked that one, and um, so you actually managed to pull up a punch, uh, an amateur punch, if you will, <laughs> and you actually did it so well that you ended up uh, breaking your friend's nose, like having it pointed in the wrong direction, and it's kind of like. How? Uh, are you just a naturally gifted puncher? Or did you, like, go to the gym often enough and always, like, practice on the punching bag that often? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you do it? Yeah. Well, like I said, I was so frightened of the scene because I was just, like, I've never – I had never physically been in a fist fight with somebody. Um, and so, you know, we practiced it. We rehearsed. We, like, you know – and and then on the day, I, I freaking went for it, you guys. But I'm also dyslexic, so, like, my spatial awareness was obviously off. And I literally, it was just like, eh, you know, I didn't remember our characters, but it was, a, it was like a play. And, you know, just, and I just saw this, you know, and then Mike's, like, look in his eyes, his eyes start tearing up, you know, it was, it was beautiful. It makes me cry even right now. I get emotional. Sorry, sorry. I'll, I'll be okay. I'm okay. <laughs> Anyway, getting into the actual question, yeah. are there any methods or preparation you do when voicing Ed? What, uh, when vo Say that again. Is there any methods I do when I'm voicing Ed? Yeah, any methods of, pre of preparation you do when voicing Ed? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. The, I probably prepared Ed the least amount because, you know, obviously as an actor, we work the you-know-what out of this, you know, say out of the script. We're out of the, you know, like what, you know, like what's my motivation? What are we doing in the scene? You know, like, I mean, I, I had my, obviously the Ed voice down, but very early on in the series, um, Eddie, or sorry, um, Danny actually said, he's like, he's not sounding like Ed because they wanted Ed like you saw. He, he comes out of left field. He comes up from below. He comes up from above. He comes in like sideways and says like this, the, the, you know, the, the most unique stuff, right? And, and what I was doing was I was boring because I was working on that, like I was working on the scenes too much at the early uh, beginnings. So they just said, okay, we don't tell this to anybody else, but you, Ed, we don't prepare at all. I mean, obviously know the, you know, what the episode's about, but don't study it, right? And so the first time in my career where literally I would get the script and like the night before I just kind of like, yeah, just kind of read through it or whatever, but no working on it. Because that was the brilliance of Ed. Um, was because like that, they wanted to always to be like, I was surprised what the heck I was going to say. Which a lot of the time, I was. Because <laughs> it was like the first time I'd seen it, you know. So, uh, um, you know, but uh, other shows, it's like you work really hard on, you know, developing, you know, say, not the script analysis so much because it's cartoons, right? So there's, there's an element of you always got to have that animated energy about it. Right. And so, um, I mean, the same rules apply in terms of, um, you know, like knowing your stuff, but it's, you know, in terms of saying like this lovely character that Ed is, oh my God, what a joy to play. Right. You know, cause all like, honestly, the more that I just completely went ape shit, like, uh, sideways on him, Danny, as long as Danny laughed, I was like, okay, I'm not going to get, okay. I'm not going to get fired today. Okay. 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 <laughs> you know? So, uh, it was great. So, you know, I must have passed the audition, you know, cause I, I got the part, you know? Now you, you mentioned also that you had so many great Ed moments though, especially in the holiday episodes. Did you have oh. any favorite, like of those holiday episodes? For me, it was a tie up between boo ha ha and, uh, holla, hanky panky holla balloo. Yeah. Yeah. My, you know, because personally Christmas, the Christmas is always my favorite time of year. I love that Ed was just like so sparkly and just, you know, like destroyed the house trying to remember, remember trying to set the, the house up for, um, for Santa Claus. Yes. And, and he just literally pulled like the Christmas lights all the way through the wall, basically destroyed. And, you know, and, and double D is just like, ah! <laughs> you know, he's so for me, that was probably my favorite episode just cause like, like I said, for me personally, as a human being, I love I love Christmas. Uh -huh. I, yeah. I love the episode, so too, like, it was a Christmas episode where it's like Christmas in July, and he was giving out all the jawbreakers that Eddie had. <laughs> I thought it was such a great episode. <laughs> Absolutely, you know? And, uh, and you know, and too, like, I think the Halloween episode was awesome. Um, 
you know, and, and I mean, really the only, I guess the only episode we didn't do is maybe like a mother's day, you know, episode, you know, I don't know why, you know, they all had a mother. <laughs> especially, especially too that we, we, get to, we hear more about Ed's mother than all the other Ed's though. Like that's why it would have been cool to do like a mother's day episode. Like you said, where it revolves around Sarah, Ed and their mom. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. You know, but I uh, know, I mean, you know, that's the, that's the genius of Danny and Tanucci is he had this Bible of what was going to happen. And, you know, um, it, we didn't let the scene go until we had it, you know? Um, and I love it because the, the most positive affirmation you would get from him, you knew that it was okay when he finally went like, well, all right, if that's the best you can do, you know, all right, we'll move on. We knew we weren't going to get stuck in a scene. Right. And so, you know, to, to get the, you know, to get the hall pass <laughs> to be able to like move on to the next scene was always just like a, a huge victory for all of us in the show, you know. <laughs> I got I got to bring Danny on, I, da, uh, Mr. Antonucci. If you're watching this, we love to have you on. Danny. <laughs> I love him. Tiff, before you ask your, your question, I just want to say too, Matt. I love the scene in the Valentine's Day episode where like Kevin goes up to Ed and he goes, "You just earned yourself a day in detention," and Ed goes, <laughs> "I that. did watch them all. I forgot. That's right. I forgot about that one." Oh, oh, it was so good. Hard to go, man. <laughs> Absolutely. Tiff, Tiff, uh, your question. So, do you have a least favorite Ed, Ed, and Eddie episode? Well, for for reasons where when we were doing it, um, because vocally the one episode where um, uh, what was it? Uh, the nightmare, or like the um, where Johnny, uh, yeah, like where I'm, like Ed would just like scream. In fear, my vocal cords at one point kind of, they felt like they bled. And I was just like not really enjoying life that day because I was just like, wow, this hurts, <laughs> you know. Um, but in order to get the essence of what, you know, what they really needed to have for the audience, right, we, you know, we, we sometimes, we, we bled even from the vocal cords for the, you know, for the art, you know. But um, yeah, no, I was very happy when I would get, like, cause sometimes like that, if we weren't doing something the way that say Danny was hearing it in his head, we didn't move forward. Right. And so sometimes like vocally at the end of four, four hours, we felt, I felt like I'd just been on like an eight hour binge. Cause it was, you know, we were just so tired. Right. Um, you know, but that's what we needed to have. Right. I mean, probably the most common thing we would hear would be like energy, energy, energy. And, you know, cause that's what they needed to have for each, pretty much every scene. Right, like we we earned the like you know crazy 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 and then for the comedic pause and then and then off we go again right so you know that's um yeah um I did oh sorry go ahead Tiff I was gonna say do you have like any remedies that you do to help your vocal cords like during scenes like. Yeah, I mean, now, nah, like, for sure, um, like, back in the day, I just, you know, I guess that's just being young and dumb, you know, I'd scream, and you know, then all of a sudden I'd get hoarse, and so then I'd have to just be, you know, be rest for a bit, um, so, but, uh, yeah, in the last couple of years, for sure, um, you know, I do, uh, I'll do, like, on my own, I'll just do, like, a vocal warm-up, you know, but super simple, just, like, I put a straw in water, blow bubbles, keeps the old vocal cords nice and, you know, um, what did they say? They keep some flapping nicely, you know, so, um, you know, and just good water and stuff like that. So, you know, it's, uh, yeah, you know. But when you also mentioned the uh, Ed yelling, though, did you feel the same way when you filmed the Ed Blues one where Ed was met, pissed off because he had a pebble in his shoe? Oh, my God. That's right. Well, like, that was one of them. Right? Didn't he have, like, a massive freakout? He did. He had. He was in such a bad mood all because yeah. he had a pebble in his shoe. He had a pebble, a pebble in my shoe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, that's right. God. You guys, thanks for remembering all these. Yeah. Thanks for helping me remember all these things. <laughs> I, I remember because it, um, it was Janice, like she was saying, Ed, she was like screaming, Ed, and then it's something like, and, and you said in Ed, you were screaming, get lost. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. Yep. And she's like, sorry, Ed. <laughs> I was like, good for Ed. Good for yeah. Ed for finally standing That's up right. for his sister. Take his feelings, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Chris, before you ask the next question, I just want to say that, Matt, I just also love the scene. The only, I mean, I love when you screamed. It was in the fourth episode of the season where yeah. they try to make Ed look cool and they were selling energy drinks. And it was like this, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and 
ladies and gentlemen, come by a delicious, come by a decibulous, um, NLG drink. Hello! <laughs> Absolutely, man. It's, uh, you know, but that's the, that's the beauty of the show, you know? It's just like all these different sort of just, I don't know, moments that we got to share with everybody. That to me, you know, as um, that, that's the, that's the lasting legacy of the gift of the show, I think, you know, and, um, and then being able to go to, to fan conventions and, you know, meet like people like you guys and everyone else that comes to them is such a gift. Cause you know, I mean, I get to hear for, you know, like hours and hours upon at a time of how much this show really impacted people in such a positive way you know so for me i'm just like you better sweet bippy if that makes somebody just like joyful i'm just like yes that just makes me so happy you know it's uh you know i'm one of those people by the way that positively uh, impacted yeah. and Eddie, that yeah, edited yeah. i know well i'm you know i'm gonna intend i'm hoping that like all these podcasts like, that say we're doing i'm hoping that through that connection we can somehow drum up some really good local support to come to some, you know, say like an, like a convention and, you know, say your guys area. Right. Um, because I think that would just be, I mean, it'd just be amazing, you know? So, um, you know, so, so if you guys know anybody, then, uh, you know, just reach out. We'll do, sir. Well, absolutely. Uh, Chris, your next question. Chris well, is, Chris is sideways. He's laying on his side. Chris, you're hang on, hang on. Your side. Oh, there Chris, you go. Oh, okay, he's back up now. Okay, hi, buddy. Right. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, um, I well, that's okay. I just last time I go off script, I swear. <laughs> but uh, yeah, something that often like always perplexed me about the show was like, why was the cast like so limited? Why weren't there like much in the way of side characters, like unnamed characters, <laughs> and like every character on the show had a name. Yeah, everybody was. It's like it's just a principal cast. We never really saw like any teachers. The parents were mentioned but never seen. Yeah. Was yeah, there like a reason for it? Or? Your guess is as good as mine. I mean, you know, Danny and the writers would be the ones to ask for that, right? Because um, I mean, really, um, he had a he had a he had a concept of what the show was going to be, and never strayed from it. You know, like even where a lot of shows will be like, well improvise just add some stuff and we'll fix it in you know at the end or we'll do whatever it was like it was almost like a cardinal rule if we went outside the lines it was just like you know the look we would be like i'm sorry that i took an extra breath <laughs> right because like he 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 had a, a vision of every single episode and it was it it was yeah it was it was surgical almost you know but within that freedom of as long as we painted as as full as we could to to basically um, not go outside the lines because the structure of the show was so um, what it was if that makes sense it, so it yeah. felt like it was this free form but in order to record it it wasn't free form like we had to let's like we you know say like 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 that with them um, say the rest of the characters they had the script down they did all these different ways I like me that's where I, I feel like I was really blessed to play Ed because he, I think for me, it, it allowed me to play so much more because I truly was coming in blind a lot of the time, right? Because I didn't read the script beforehand because they said on, you know, the first season, don't read the script because they were boring. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, so, um, so it was great. So it gave me so much freedom, right? And then if I fucked up the line, it's okay because then I'd be like, hey, you guys, you told me you guys not to read it beforehand. So give me a break, right? So sometimes it gave me a little bit of slack, but not much, <laughs> you know? I wanted to ask this too, uh, Matt. Um, if you could re revise the show, reboot Ed and Eddie, how would yeah. you go do it? Like, i.e., like, where would you have, like, what would you have the Eds, the Canker Sisters, and all the kids in the Coldy Sack, what would mm. they be doing right now? Pretty much probably everything that they were doing in the show back then. Nobody, I think in many ways, that would be the only way you could sort of recapture the magic. Um, and I don't think you could anyhow, but you know what I mean? Like, I think, I know other shows have said, you know, like, a, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe the Edge would be like 10 years older or like they did say with the Ninja Turtles, right? Now, you know, now the guys are older. And so there's sort of like a natural progression of them getting older and going out in different situations and stuff. 
Um, but with the ads, it was like, I think, I don't know, with all due respect to it, I, I think that's what has made it kind of timeless because, you know, um, I think trying to reboot it would just be a bad idea. I agree. I mean, well, not, not, not that it's a bad idea. It's just like sometimes it just wouldn't work. I agree. Right? Like they yeah. tried to run yeah. rats and it did not work. No, no, exactly. You know, and stuff. So, so I mean, and so that makes me happy because I don't know if we'd be able, you know, I mean, again, we're all actors. So if they said, you know, you guys, yeah, you guys, we're going to show back together. We're going to do this. I'm sure that all of us would say, okay, right. <laughs> but I know it um, makes me happy that they're not even thinking, they're not even close to even, they're never going to enter that building. That's what I love about Danny too, is he said, no, man, let's go out like Seinfeld. Like, let's go out while we're still rocking and we're still, you know, sort of quote unquote, knocking it out of the park, you know? And, and, uh, Hey, at least you guys had a better ending. Yeah. Well, like, yeah. No shit. Eh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And not only that, Matt, but you also, you guys are actually, Ed and Eddie is uh, like the longest out of all the cartoon, cartoon Friday shows. Ed and Eddie was probably the longest tenured show there. It outlasted Powerpuff. We all lasted Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, Powerpuff Girls lasted from 98 to 2005. Ed and Eddie lasted from 99 to 2009. Yes. And Powerpuff yeah. Girls got a reboot, but we're not going to talk about that. Don't even tell me. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not even going to you know, No, I'm just, no, I'm grateful. Um, You know, because once again, we had no idea. Like, I mean, I think in many ways, for me personally, I'm glad. I had no idea how popular we were until I went on and started meeting people, you know, um, on a big run tour that I did around um, North America. And that's when I really realized, because we were talking to kids in schools Right. And so going in and saying, you know, hey, everybody who wants to save the planet with Ed and, you know, and, and my partner at the time, Stephanie and, you know, and, and like the like 2,500 kids and their teachers would lose their mind. Um, and, and it was such a teachable moment to then it, it instantly welcomed us in like we were old friends already. Right. And so it was very a powerful moment because it made me like I was always very grateful to be obviously an actor. And to be able to be hired and to, you know, um, work my craft and say, this is what I do for my living, right? But to be able to then get this instant feedback from fans and from parents and teachers, right, in this way, it changed my whole way of thinking about it, you know? Um, And so, like, even now going to fan conventions, it's the same thing. My whole MO now is I'm so excited because I get to meet people again who are also so positively impacted by this show, right? You know, and now they're kids. And it's just like, I mean, you know, it's my version of having a love fest. It's like we lived in the 60s, you know? It's just like, because I get to like feel the love and give the love all weekend being, you know, like, like, you guys are so sparkly, you know? And then I just add like, you know, who wants to believe in their dreams, you know? And have, you know, these great conversations like this, right? And uh, so, you know, to me, it's it's a win-win and, I'm so grateful. Beautiful sediment, sir. And I uh, bless you for that. Bless you. Uh, Chris? Yeah. Chris, yeah, getting back to my actual question that I was supposed to ask. Yeah. Uh, circling back, though, to the uh, 2009 TV movie series finale, you know, Bad Ed and Eddie, the big picture show. Yep. Uh, what are your thoughts on, like, uh, how the series ended? You know what? We knew it was time because, again, my well, they told us as well, you know, this is going to be our final season. And so energetically, I just knew, oh, all right, awesome. It's going to be over because it was just time, you know. Um, and, and I mean, for me, positively, selfishly, if that makes sense, because I was he- we were heading out on our run around North America, literally within weeks of finishing the last episode of Ed, Ed, and Eddie, right? So even, like, time-wise, I'm like, Oh my God, this is so great. Right. So, you know, um, so the way that, um, you know, to be honest with you, I didn't even watch the last episode. So sorry. Okay. Um, I don't know why I've never watched it, but I just never watched it. Um, but I, but was it like, did people like it? I loved it. <laughs> you loved it. Yeah. Or did some people not like it? I thought it was a good way to end the series. Hey. Oh, good. Okay. I good stuff. I never had a chance to watch it, but I did watch a lot of the episodes, yeah. but it's all amazing. You know, I'm sure it's yeah, yeah, just yeah. as Tip fabulous. Up. I'll send the link to that last episode. I, I want to rewatch the whole ser- the whole thing. Like, I would love to, just to bring back the nostalgia of, like, you know, yeah. the, the stuff that we used to watch growing up. 
No doubt, hey. Oh. No, that's uh, uh, that, as as Ed would say, all is fair in love and jawbreakers. Absolutely, you bet your <laughs> sweet peppy. <laughs> Absolutely. I think my favorite episode was when the Kanker sisters like kidnapped them, and they were trying to like. Because how much they loved them, but like yeah. hated them secretly. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, like, so you, you kind of like, you know, because you're a young boy, right? So, you know, we're thinking like, oh, girls, like, oh, they're the cankers, you know. And, and then, you know, my sister, I was terrified of, you know, it's just like, you know, <laughs> but, you know I love her immensely, you know, but, uh, you know, so, oh, yeah, it's uh, such a great character. Great show. I mean, great characters. Great characters. And, and also, by the way, you, <clears throat> Janice, and Aaron, uh, work so well together like like the way you guys feed each other lines like you as like rena sarah and ed or as make hanker and ed it's just wonderful and she actually did the make hanker impression when i had her on oh really awesome <laughs> yeah i know aaron's a rock star man well so is janice you know like the like i still like whenever i sort of remember some of their lines i just remember feeling this vis visceral um you know like um uh tingling in my skin because i was so affected by their voice being so powerful <laughs> and it was always you know directed like <laughs> basically like <laughs> one of my favorite uh, lines and also uh tiff um you asked your question right tiff no um no i didn't ask it yet um it's <laughs> what was your favorite ed themed episode of ed ed and eddie ed themed hmm I'm still gonna go with the Christmas episode, even though it wasn't just made maybe just Ed, but but it's uh, I don't know for me, spirit. yeah, because you know, like I said, personally, I love Christmas so much. Um, and so for me, I felt like I got um, the greatest gift to be able to have this character that was just so, um, like I feel like he really had just a good heart, a good soul, you know, I and mean, not that the rest of the characters didn't. But I got the gift of, of, of truly being able to, you know, show up how I am, say, if I was, like, you know, times 11. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know? And then I got paid for it, too. So it's just, like, crazy. <laughs> well, Thank you. Yeah, and one of the lines I actually liked, though, my, my fiancé may disagree with me on this one, but I just love the fact that you, you're you so energetic, you're so fun-loving. One of my favorite lines that you did was when they try to change Johnny 2 by 4 to be more annoying than they are, and Ed goes, <laughs> and people really like it when you poke him on the head. And he goes, see, Eddie likes it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's like these lines, right? It's just like, you know, 25 years later, you know, it's still, it's like fresh. It's awesome. I love it. You know? Yeah. I think that's why, I mean, I mean, it'd be great if you could redo it, but I don't think you can, you know, um, it's just cause everything changes, but I think, you know, what's lighting it up right now is perfect for right now. Right. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, we talked about so much about like, you know, you did a, a fantastic, amazing job as Ed. Another character you portrayed that's very popular was of course mm -hmm. Captain N, which is the, oh. the game master. Um, I want to get your memories of your audition for doing uh, Captain N, the Game Master. I do remember. It's funny because Captain N was my first sort of official bona fide big ticket um, animation series. Because, you know, being living up here, being a kid in Canada, um, L.A. is like, you know, this mythical, you know, place where dreams come true, right? So um, I grew up watching, um, what is it, NBC Saturday morning cartoons, right? And uh, so to be cast on Captain N, which again, I wasn't a video game player, so I had no idea once again how popular, um, say, Nintendo was. I mean, obviously I knew people play video games and stuff like that, but when it when when Captain N came out, um, people lost their minds. The same thing, right? Going, you know, oh my God. You know, thankfully I got a little bit better, I think, I hope. Um, you know, I, I, I remember feeling like I had no idea what I was doing. Um, you know, I heard some of the early episodes and I was just like, <gasps> oh, <God. laughs> but, uh, you know, we were all basically babes in the woods, right? We were learning our craft together. Um, so, you know, this was very special, you know? Um, and then, uh, you know, like then it's funny with then getting Ed, it was such an opposite way of getting the part where I actually did probably what every actor's not supposed to do. Um, because we were probably eight callbacks in, which was unheard of at the time. 
Um, but I, I, at one point, I remember thinking, like, what do they want? Like, what? I have no idea what they want at all. Because all we could hear was them. Like, I could see them on the other side of the glass when we were in our in our auditions, right? And I could see Danny going like, yeah, that's kind of close, or that's no, or or whatever. And then they'd take us out and they'd bring us back in, you know, um, beat us up a little bit more. No, I'm just kidding. But then they'd give us the script again to just try and play or whatever, right? And then by about the eighth callback, I kind of figured we were getting close because it was me and Sam and Tony that would go in as the threesome. But then there was maybe a couple others that would come in, um, you know, between say our scene and then they, someone else would come in and then they would leave. And then I was so frustrated at one point because I was just like, I have no idea what they wanted. And somehow this came out. I just literally went like, um, uh, excuse me. And, and cause I had enough of the voice print by that to be able to have that sound. And I, and I did what no actor is supposed to do. I went, um, and I blew on the mic. I went like, you know, I tapped on the microphone. So it went like, you know, <laughs> and then I was like, uh, how do you get water from this thing here? Right. And on the other side of the class, I heard, I see Danny going like, and I'm thinking like, ah, oh, shit, I'm, I'm fired before I'm even hired. And Danny's going, that's it. That's it. And he's screaming at the engineer who's looking at me like he's going to kill me. Right. And he goes, did you get it? And the engineer's like, yes, I did. And he goes, play him the thing, play him the thing. And so for 13 episodes, like I, I heard every time I wasn't Ed, um, that mistake, right. Which got me the role of my life. You know, so I thought, uh, you know, it's kind of cool because, uh, you know, he said, if you keep doing that, like, uh, and I, I literally, I was like, uh, how do you get whopper from this thing here? Um, he's like, you got the part. And so, you know, for the first 13 episodes, every time I was getting out of like sort of Ed being just like from nowhere, right. Um, they would play the take. And then, so thank God. Cause I, you know, it helped me find my way in on this sort of like mistake. Right. Which turns out to be, you know, such a gift. Right. Wonderful gift, and it impacted uh, it impacted my life, Tiffany's life, Chris's life, to, for the greater good. And it still is, right? I know that's why I think it's so beautiful. Is you know, I guess in a way, this is our way of rebooting it every time we get to talk about it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> absolutely, yeah, uh, absolutely. Chris, uh, your next question. Yeah, whenever like Ed would say something out of nowhere, and you would hear this like fox squealing, thing, and it, it would sort of just be like the. Uh, a WTF moment for both Eddie and Double, Eddie and Double D. It was like, eh? <laughs> Absolutely. and the funny thing is, is Tony and Sam. That's exactly how, like, as friends and actors, they they we they would be the reaction would be so natural, right? Because they'd be looking at me like, huh? <laughs> so to this day, we still. That's how our dynamics were we're built as, as friends as well. So it's just awesome. <laughs> uh, and Chris, you had a, uh, did you have a Captain N question? So, uh, did we already talk about your memories of your audition as Captain N? Yeah. Um, um, yeah, well, I mean, because it was my first one. So really, I don't really remember the audition process except for, you know, after a few auditions, I got the parts. And so, Back then, they also allowed us to play a lot more. So when we got the show, for maybe the first three or four episodes, the whole cast was together, and we recorded. So like it would take like a full eight hours to record one episode, right? So they gave us a lot of time to play and a lot of time to sort of discover, you know, sort of what, what was going to work and what maybe didn't work or whatever, you know? Oh, well, yeah. There were a lot of liberties taken also with Gavin and the Game Master. And one of the liberties that kind of always bugged me, my six-year-old self as a kid, it yeah. was the fact that the zapper itself didn't have a trigger guard, so you couldn't actually, like, do the cowboy spin. And I always tried to do it myself regardless as yeah. a kid. I was like, damn it. <laughs> it's not working. <laughs> it's probably That's just good. not how physics work, unfortunately. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, well, it's uh, actually, I was at a convention in um, October, and um, it was the first time that somebody had actually brought um, one of the uh, fire gunny things, and then brought another, um, she brought another toy from the, from the show as well, um, which I'd never seen before, so I didn't even know we had product, so um, it was, uh, it was cool. 
I suppose there were like any uh, video games you would have liked to have seen crossed over in the series, would you? Um, I'm not a big fan of crossovers just because, I don't know, maybe I'm the wrong person to ask for that because, I, I don't know, I just think so many shows stand so well on their own. Um, but, I mean, you know, crossing over as well makes, uh, I think, maybe, maybe it builds the fan base out more and more and more, maybe, you know? I don't know. Because like when I, I mean, was crossovers or was like the main theme of the show, so there was that. Yeah, 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 true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's true. You know, um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Like maybe it's familiarity, right? Because you recognize these characters from one show, but then all of a sudden they like, you know, like remember when I was a kid, there's a show called Adam Twelve, which was like these cops, right? And then a, a show called Emergency, um, or no, Emergency? Yeah, Emergency, and. And so they would cross over, if that's what you mean. Like, one would go to the hospital, and then the others, like, their characters would sort of cross over and say a few lines together. I'd be like, hey, those are the guys from Adam-12. <laughs> you know? So. Well, one game that I would have actually liked to have seen crossed over in Captain N would have actually been Metal Gear, the original Metal Gear, the classic oh, yeah. one that was at, at first for MSX, but they did come out with a Nintendo version. Yeah. And I would have liked to have seen, like, uh, what kind of depiction they would have had of Solid Snake back then. Yeah, yeah. Like, before David Hayter, like, uh, gave his voice out in 1998. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good point. Good point. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Uh, Tiff, you had a question? What was your favorite Captain N line? <clears throat> Is this even a line? I can't remember. Was his tig signature line like um oh, I can't even remember his signature line. Oh my god. It's in there somewhere. What was his what was his call to action? Um I'll have to look that up. <laughs> I don't even remember. Oh I feel like right I can't lie to you. I'm not gonna go, oh it's this one. You'll be like, that's not a line. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I want to say though, like uh, one of his main catchphrases was like a big game over. Oh, really? Yeah, can't find it. That's what dusted out of my brain. <laughs> yeah, Ed took over <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Oh my god. Oh, I mean, so personally, I never seen Captain N, so I feel bad. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll oh. some, uh, videos so, of that. Yeah, yeah, no I gotta yeah. watch. I loved King Hippo in that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it always bothered me that they turned King Hippo like oh, into yeah. some kind of like alien green creature. Uh, what was up with that? <laughs> he was actually supposed to be like uh, still a like, humanoid from Hippo Island in the South <laughs> Pacific. Yeah. So yeah, why'd they make that alteration? You know, I think that's probably that was a contractual thing for Gary Chalk, who's a really good friend. Um, you know, I'm just totally kidding, <laughs> but um, it's I don't know, but I have no idea why they would. You know, maybe like it's like why did they change the Hulk? Right? Like why was he green? You know, you, when he used to be great, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, those are fair yeah. points. Could have, I mean, yeah. it could have easily been licensing. I don't know. Maybe, yeah, could have been. Man, yeah. we. Were you ever, like, even back then or even current day, were you ever consider yourself a Nintendo guy? Like, were you a fan of Nintendo? I just didn't because I wasn't a gamer. So I, I really I, – it's funny. <laughs> I only knew Nintendo was a game when I was, like, Captain N, the Game Master. But then someone said, hey, Captain Nintendo, you're Captain Nintendo or whatever. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I am. <laughs> so – because, like, I'm not kidding you. Like, remember when Pong came out? Oh, yeah. Wait, yeah. I played Pong, and when it hit level two, I had to shut it down because I was so stupid. Like, I couldn't, I would be like, uh, I can't, like, I, my reflexes were so bad. So, um, you know, my brain just was going like, I'm not having fun. <laughs> so, I didn't play video games. So, honestly, it's just like a, one of those things you have to, like, do more to get good at. Yeah, well, exactly. I remember, yeah, because I remember way back in the day, and yep. when I was first playing in Punch Out, um, yep. for the life of me, I couldn't get past Glass Joe. Ooh. I was seriously getting like the, the, the three TKO, TKOs every time. Yep. And uh, I was actually getting the game over. And, and yeah, I remember 
and my five-year-old self uh, crying over it because I just couldn't figure it out. Uh, but eventually, yeah, I got back into the game, got back on the saddle. Yeah. Well, eventually, yeah. I got I passed past Joe, uh, then Von Kaiser, or then Piston Honda, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, yeah, eventually, yeah, I want us to actually maybe be ten years later, or I would get to Mister Dream. Yeah. Or Mike Tyson, as he would be in some versions, but yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. And I, I, so, I'll... oh yeah, it's another case of like how practice makes perfect. Yep, yep. No, Although they true. say that perfect practice yeah. makes perfect, but even that, even if it's not perfect practice, and you can really at least just get to the point where you need to actually make it where you need to go, or where yeah. you're at least adequate, yeah. and. Maybe not necessarily settling for mediocre, but at least getting to a point where you're going to be satisfied with where you're going to be. Yeah. Well, you know what, you guys? You've inspired me. I'm going to go find a game of Pong, and I'm going to get to level two, okay? Go so, for it, man. Go for it. More power to you. Guys, I'm in. I'm in. You guys have re-inspired me. Thank you. <laughs> I want to and before, I, players. And before <laughs> I ask my next question, I just want to say, Matt, I love your hat. By the way, I love the hat. Oh. What does it say? Big what? Big. Well, it's I. You know, it's actually for. It was in support of Ukraine. Um, oh. where uh, yeah, where um, there's a there's a Ukraine well, a Ukrainian community um where I was living in the summertime, and um, I just thought it was just such a beautiful hat, and uh, um, it was uh, so I bought it because in order to obviously support, um, uh, their cause. Um, and, uh, so yeah, but I don't even know if it, what does it say? Does it say big? Big, uh, big U. Big W. Big U. It's actually my big, this is my big ego is what it is. <laughs> big fat ego is what it is. Oh, uh, the next question I had for you, Matt, I asked this question to Erin Fitzgerald and she gave me a yeah. in the answer for this one. I want to get your you have to answer like her too. Huh? Did I have to answer her like her no, as well? No, no, no. This is your own personal belief oh, on this okay. one. Um, yeah. Do you prefer now? You've dabbled in both animation and anime. Which did you prefer? Anime. Uh, anime. Pardon me. Which did you prefer doing voiceover work for anime, uh, anime or animation? That's awesome. I like. You know what? I'm gonna try the anime because that sounds like it's really enticing to me. Um, but the anime that I did, uh, it's you know, being an actor, it's the same thing where it's just a different form of going, getting to be able to go to you know, do our job every day. Right. So the anime stuff is more, it's like painting fences. We have to record these lines that have already been done. Right. Cause it's dubbing. So it's got, it's, it's, it's definitely, um, I mean, a lot of the characters are a lot of fun to play. Um, personally, I like playing um, in prelays more because it just allows a little more freedom outside the lines. Um, but yet at the same time, you know, being able to do the, do the anime shows um, it actually allowed me to find, um, realize that there was this whole other genre of animation, right? Um, so, you know, so it's really, it opened up my, my whole world in terms of getting to play, say, you know, a few of the shows that, that I've been fortunate to get hired on, um, you know, still have an audience that are, um, you know, same thing like Ed, right? It, it just keeps finding this new generation of, of fans. So, uh, I'm like, just like, thank you, thank you, thank you, you know? Um, cause it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I just can't believe, I mean, I'm over 40 years in, is this, in this business now and it blows my mind because, you know, it makes me realize like, wow, like I was 14 when I started, I got my first gig. I was playing Santa's lead elf at the Christmas display downtown, literally going, you know, God bless us, everyone, you know, you know, come to the Bay and have a great, I don't think I said come to the Bay, but, you know, we were basically going, you know, Merry Christmas, everybody. And so without even realizing that I was, I was doing what I loved, I got paid to do what I love and I got to make voices as well and play these characters, which I think is really, maybe that's partly why I love Christmas so much too, because it was around the time when I got hired for like this, my first gigs professionally. And I mean, as a kid, I always loved Christmas too, so um, you know, I'm just, I'm a Christmas person. <laughs> Matt, email me uh, your address. I'm going to send you a Christmas card. Did I finish oh, Christmas cards? Okay. I, I want to send you one. Well, thank you very much. I will receive that with much, much honor. Absolutely. It'll it's be a total time. honor sending it to you. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Tiff, your next question? Grab Tiff. Tiffy. 
Tiffany. I, that's a new nickname I got. I got one for Chris. I got one for I Matt. A, everyone has a nickname for me. Oh, my that's mom, awesome. Fun fact, my mom used to call me Tiffinator, like the Terminator. Tiffinator. That's a good one. Hasta la vista, <laughs> Tiffa. Yes, Tiffa. Um, what was your favorite part about playing Captain N? What I loved was it, it was like, because like for real, it was so new, right? And so I oscillated a lot between, you know, because like that, you don't want to get fired. But I also had, like, so I had to, I had to, um, I had to gain this confidence within myself, knowing that I was a good actor, but I still had to bring it, I still had to find a way to make it animated, which was <laughs> really challenging at the beginning, right? And, and, uh, but luckily, like look at the cast list that you know was that I got to work with with the rest with with all the people that we you know basically grew up doing these shows you know from those early days um it was the best educational process that I could have right you know so we would we would constantly be almost like not trying to one up each other but we'd always it was it was almost like a it's like a um it's like a throwdown right like we somebody do a line and then the other person would be like yeah okay I'm gonna top that Right. And so the energy of it was so fresh and so new because it was literally our first episodes of calling ourselves professional voice actors, you know? Uh, so there's a real electricity about it, right? It's like being in your first band. You suck, but you're so pumped, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, uh, I'm like, in well, up. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, I knocked it out of the park today. You know, and the neighbors are going, like, we're going to move. Holy shit. <laughs> Which I was in a band too when I was, you know, around that age. And so oh. our, our neighbors definitely did move because they're just like, oh, no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> but being in the band is the best thing. <laughs> so I was already used to being on the mic. So that uh that that helped me a ton. You know? Well you're just a charismatic man all around. So this worked out perfectly both in voice oh. acting and in band work. Yeah, well, I feel super sub I call myself a a uh what was I? I was like a bad version of, say, Brian Adams on a good day. <laughs> uh, and I was too short to be David Lee Roth, you know, like to play Van Halen, but Van Halen was like my ultimate band. Um, you know, so we, you know, I tried to scream. It's like best I can, but, um, you know, we still played it nonetheless. Do you like Sammy Hagar? I love him. I love, I, yes. I love Sammy. I love Dave. I love um, When It Takes It All, that song. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they, you know, I mean, talk about, uh, like, you know, and oh, on art imitating life, is that the right word? At the premiere of uh, Ninja Turtles, uh, was at the Universal Amphitheater. And uh, where we were, I guess, having the premiere in the theater, um, uh, Alex Van Halen, who's a drummer for, for Van Halen, um, him and his kids were literally sitting in the row in, in front of us in the theater. And it was like my, I, I couldn't believe it. I almost didn't watch the movie because I was just like, oh my God, that's Alex freaking Van Halen. These guys are my heroes, right? I was, I was trying to look going, oh, is Eddie going to come? Is Dave going to come? Is Sammy going to come? No, you know, it was just him with his kids. But I was, I, I, for the life of me, it was one of those moments where I'm such a dumbass because the fan boy in me or whatever completely shit the bed and just tapping him on the shoulder and going like, dude, you guys changed my life. Right. But I was so embarrassed because I was just thinking, you're going to sound like such an idiot. So I, so I, I didn't, right. You know, and you probably feel this person behind him looking, I'm going, is this guy trying to ask me a question and whatever. Right. So, <laughs> so, so <laughs> note to kids, if you ever get a chance to say, you know, thanks to your heroes, take your chance. Cause you know, most of the time they're pretty freaking awesome. You know? Amen. Absolutely. You know, uh, let's, um, we, we, um, have a, we have a, a, a couple more questions we definitely want to ask you before we wrap up. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, Chris, uh, we have five questions left. Chris, here's one of the five. So take it away. What? All right. What teachings or important lessons have uh, left you during all your years of voice acting or doing the voiceover business? What can you say the beginning part again? That for, uh, what was the what? What teachings or important lessons or teachings. have have just stuck with you during your years of voice acting and voiceover roles? Yeah, you know, more and more and more, keep believing in yourself and believing in your dream, 
and what it is that you came here to do in this world, um, it, it for me just gets reinforced again and again and again, because as I've gone forward in my life, this choice that I made at, you know, I mean, I, why did I think my life was half over at 13? No idea. But there was this, this fire in me that said, Matt Hill, if you don't make this dream happen, it's going to pass you by. So for me, that was my catalyst to go, all right, I'm, I'm making this dream happen. You know, um, I, I inspired my first agent who turned out to be my only agency, um, you know, with my enthusiasm. And even she said it, she's like, either I'm delusional or you're got something kid. Cause your, your enthusiasm's off the charts, but I bet you, but you're not very good. Cause you just don't have any experience. So she made me take a course so that I wouldn't let her down while she took a, took a chance on me. Um, and you know, three weeks later after taking that course, like I say, Christmas time, I got my first gig. Um, I, you know, I made more money at 13 than I'd ever made in my life. Um, and they brought lunch <laughs> and, you know, and, and for real, it changed my life. Um, and so I think for, for me, it's the lasting, um, confirmation that I, I made a really good choice. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of that fact, you know, um, you know, and again, th there was years where sometimes it was really, it was really tough. And maybe I go through a really slow period, but we all do, right? With just with life or, you know, trying to figure out where we're going to go next. Um, it's no different being an actor, um, but I feel more and more and more these life lessons that I've been able to share along the way, right? Like, you know, for instance, on our tour around North America, where we were talking to all the kids, being able to go in there authentically as Ed and Raphael and have kids literally go oh my god and because they were so excited because they already felt like they knew me because we'd spent a lot of saturdays together right it's like you guys all growing up mm -hmm. and that that was such a gift for me to receive right and so i was always really grateful to be an actor but i had no idea the depth of where i could actually go when I had these in-persons with, with other, you know, with other kids and teachers, you know, and then say like this, you know, you big kids, right. As well. Um, I, I, um, I take that very, like, it's a big honor for me. Right. Um, you know, and so as I go along, you know, as I get a little older, um, I realize this is the gift of this moment right now. Cause you know, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Right. Um, you know, I think we just like the, the, get along with each other as best you can, you know, like I say at the end of like a lot of my keynotes, like I love because it crosses over with this voiceover career, being able to go, hey, yo, from Raphael, take care of yourself. Make sure you call your mother on Mother's Day, take care of the planet, be kind to each other. And then I go, and from uh, Tenderheart, um, make sure you love each other and love yourself and love this planet. And then I always end with Ed going like, and remember, Believe in your dreams, keep kicking your feet, and when you face plat, you can dig a hole and get out of it. Soon. <laughs> all powerful words by all those characters you just mentioned. And you yeah. and you also mentioned lunch, by the way. This is gonna lead to my next question of the final five. Dave Letterman has his top ten list. I have my final five. And this is two of my final five. Okay. And is we have a running gag on our show where like I access to every one of my guest stars. Whenever I'm not on a huge military like diet where I yeah. sometimes I would fast until dinner time, I won't eat yeah. until dinner time. But yeah. when I'm not, I am an absolute foodie. And you have yeah. so many production companies. I, I just was curious to know, like, and it could be Ed and Eddie, it could be any production company you work for. What what was the catering scene like? Who had the best catering and what was your favorite meal in catering? Oh my God, this is such food. a great question. Cause the, um, yeah, I mean, that was partly what inspired me too. I was just like, <laughs> just have to talk and they pay us and then they feed us. Oh shit, this is great. Um, and like back in the day, I mean, I know it's like a few years back, um, budgets were all, were a lot better for stuff like that. So most productions, it was literally, that's just part of what was. Right. So, you know, you go in there and you have lunch, you know, a lot of times, sometimes they'd be a little more fancy than others, but most of the time it's just good food. Um, and I'm, a, I'm, I just love good tasting food. Um, and you know, more, more on the sort of, um, uh, what's a, they eat a lot of salad, a lot of, you know, stuff like that. Um, but probably uh, 
uh, some of the, well, Ed, Ed, and Eddie, we had really good catering. Um, cause it was like a catering company around the corner from where the studio was. Um, Ninja Turtles being on set in Astoria, Oregon, um, and then having like our own food trucks that for me will, I'll never forget that because, um, the husband and wife team, um, I loved also going and visiting them. And then I would just, they convinced them that I could help them cook some of the food so that it, it made me feel really, um, I had a lot of fun being able to then like serve the, the, um, the, the crew um you know because they're like hey rap what are you what the hell are you doing up there and i'm like yeah hey, yeah yo you know god boy you guys enjoy your you know enjoy your lunch right so stuff like that i really i always i love whenever i'm gonna be on something for for a while because it's another way of like we need to eat right and fa- it brings the familia together right and so for me it's it's also that bread of life right and and it's love and it's you know it's it's love of the craft and you know and so um that's where i think such a great question by the way um that it's actually so important because we all eat right and so um the more community that we can can build from it um it's uh, you know i think it's uh, it's amazing you know and so uh um you know as i as i've forayed back into um you know i'm good i've made a decision that i'm gonna be um doing film and television again um I'm hoping as part of that, that it's again, I, I mean, cause you know, the one thing I still have on my checklist is I would love to be a regular in a TV series where I can be playing a character that is, I mean, I have no idea, but I'm hoping that it's somewhere along the lines of being able to be, um, you know, one that people remember for a while, you know, and, um, you know, and so I look forward to, um, you know, joining those casts and sitting around those tables and, you know, um, and then the animated shows that I get to be a part of, it's the same thing, right? It's more, the budgets have changed a lot in the last while for, say, cartoons. They still bring food in, but it's, it's um, I, may, I think maybe because of COVID as well. Um, it, it sort of just threw a bit of a, a little bit in it for a bit because, you know, for a while, obviously we had to sort of, this was our way to be able to connect. But now that we're back in, you know, in studios and stuff with, with each other, um, it's, you know, it, the community never goes away. So, you know, um, so I look forward to my next, um, animated series. Cause, uh, cause right now, um, I don't have one going on. So, so get gods, Matt's hungry. <laughs> That's such a great question. Well, I, I thought about like, I definitely asked this question to all my guests, but I also remember yeah. that episode from Ed and Eddie where Ed was sleepwalking and he was going raiding right in people's fridges, stealing their food. And then his stomach was like the size of a supermarket. <laughs> my, 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 my former gal, um, she said, I, <laughs> I'm kind of like Ed cause I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm ravenous and I just go to the fridge. Okay. And then sometimes I wake up in the morning and I'm like, holy shit, I had a pizza last night. I no, <laughs> Did I have that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Did I make a steak? Holy crap. How did I turn the barbecue on? <laughs> no, Wait, I'm just kidding. Why is the oven on? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, so, uh, oh yeah. But, uh, but you guys, um, thank you so much for, uh, just thanks. Just thanks for being you guys and what you guys love to do. And, you know, um, it's an honor. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. all ours. Have a very merry sparkly Christmas, you sparklies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we we just uh like I just w- want to ask uh, Tiffany and Chris like if you guys have final comments for Matt before we conclude though like Tiff uh any final comment you have for Mister Hill? Um. Yeah. Uh. Do you have a bucket list? And if you do, what's something mm-hmm. that you've always wanted to do? Well, I, uh, I've climbed to the top of one of the big, I guess that's second highest mountain in Nepal. Um, and I've always wanted to go back, um, and revisit an area that's very special to me, um, where I, um, spread some of my sister's ashes when she passed away. Um, I promised my mom when she passed away a few years ago that I would go back there and, um, you know, do the same thing for her ashes. Um, and so that's on my bucket list. Um, I still have this burning desire, even though we ran around North America when sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm literally running across like the Sahara or running across like different parts of the world. 
So there's obviously that dream still obviously lives very, you know, real inside me. Um, and so, you know, and then, and then like that, I've, I've, I feel like it's the first time in my life where what I have to offer, it may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I, but I really think, you know what, I could contend with everyone else. And, you know, um, I would love to win. Um, I mean, I've been nominated for an Emmy. Uh, I'd love to win an Emmy. Um, never been nominated for an Oscar, but boy, would that be cool. Um, but at the same time, I'm not attached, right? It's just like, I just feel just grateful to have been part of this industry as long as I have, you know? I'm so old. <laughs> you look good, man. You look very Hey, scrumptious. thank you. I'm turning 98 tomorrow. Thank you very much. You look very scrumptious, by the way. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, Chris, your final comment for Mr. Hill? I love you. Yeah. Nobody calls me Mr. Hill. This is so yeah, great. I say that it's a <laughs> I do it as a thank you. Total Thanks, respect. Thanks, dude. Everybody calls me, hey, you. Hey. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> if they were ever to possibly make a captain in video game and with like uh i guess whatever liberties they may take with the characters or maybe yeah. like uh, a more likeness they might put out of it would you actually consider coming back and, and reprising your role as the character sure absolutely if they phone me i'd be in for sure you know um i think it's uh yeah, it's, you know, it's, a, it's again, it's, it's just a, it's a time and a place, you know, and, and so, um, but who knows, right? Never say never, right? Sometimes these things come around in, in the wildest of ways. The wildest of ways. <laughs> hey, like you were saying before, hell does freeze over. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, and you know what, I'll be, um, like, I'm, I'm obviously I'm a big music fan. I have huge um, Eagles fan. I thought the were even better in this in the back half of you know the last like 25 years that they were together um you know I'm, I'm, i've been blessed to see a lot of shows and um you know it's why guys like you know springsteen and like um the stones are still out there and it's to me because it's so ingrained in who they are and what they do um and that's you know to me that's the stuff that's like lasts forever you know um and not to take away from obviously um, you know, today's incredible talented artists and stuff. Um, it's just, you know, um, it's, I, I think uh, you just realize there's sometimes these things that last for like generations, generations. And then sometimes it's like, okay, that was cool a couple of years ago or whatever. Right. You know, um, I, I want to say uh, before we wrap up though, this is my final comments for you, uh, Matt. And that is, first of all, thank you for not only an amazing part two interview. We all, I love having you on. You're one of the my favorite yeah, interviews. Brother. And I just want to say, too, that, you know, I may sound like a broken record when I say this, but you have this incredible gift where you can take a 30-something-year-old fan, bring him way down here, make him feel like that nine-year-old watching Ed and Eddie again. And oh, I love it. Time. That's Like, I, even talking to you right yeah. now, bringing yeah. in, making me feel like that child again watching <laughs> Yeah. Watching your life. Like, if I ever met you in person, like, yeah. uh, you would probably see literally my heart beating fast because I'm so <laughs> – that's how much of a huge fan I go way back. Uh, thank you. What I think is so beautiful is that I think I, I, I finally realized I got chose to do these parts, and I know it's it's a part of, like, the whole. But I, I really realized that that's my job is to just keep doing this as long as the good Lord has me on the planet, you know, because – it it's it it just helps that wheel keep going around right and and um you know i i get as much out of this as say you do and it, it absolutely overjoys me when i meet especially people in person too and and you know I'll, like i'll know i'll be like i think they're an ed fan and i'll I'll see them sort of like maybe 25 feet away and i'll be like uh hello sparkly person or you know or i'll say something like and you just see them just go like <laughs> That's and me. it's so authentic, right? It's a, you know, and they're like, you know, um, I mean, the times I hear that, you know, Ed or Raph or, you know, Tinder or whatever just helped them, you know, just have some joy in their life. Wow. What a, like, what a gift to be able to, to get to play, you know? So, um, you know, so, so I'll keep playing forever and ever and ever. It's That's awesome. awesome, awesome, sir. And I'm going to send Merry you Christmas, you guys. Thank yeah, you. we're gonna. Yeah, I'm going to send you a copy of this interview. Thank you. Um, awesome. And 
before we conclude, I feel like you deserve this. I waited, you know, I should have done this in the first interview I did with you. And that is thank you. Thank Matt you. Hill. Thank you. Oh, thank Matt you, Hill. Matt Hill. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Matt Matt Hill. Hill. <laughs> thank you so yeah. much, sir. It was such an honor. I'm going to send you a copy as soon as we're done. Thank you. Have an awesome night and awesome season. And bless you, sir. Bless you as well, you guys. All the very best. Thanks for being you guys. Thank Keep you, sir. It up Thank in the you world. Keep Thank being you. you. Hey, guys. Lots of love. Bye. Lots of love. Bye.